Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you uh, some sample patients that we've re recently seen just to give you a, a glimpse of the process and the types of uh, changes that we can observe in our patients. Uh, this is a patient who came to us with a lifelong struggle of anxiety, depression, uh, and addictive behavior. She also complained of cognitive issues like memory loss. And so I'll come back to these scores of how she achieved significant improvement over time. But first, let me show you some images. So we first gather patients' electrical activity using quantitative EEG. And you can see there is an area marked in blue over the left prefrontal cortex that's operating at a minus 1.55 standard deviation away from normal. Now this particular uh, issue is uh, gathered to quantitative EEG and it quantifies how the patient's brain operates in comparison to a normal population. And so this area of the brain in the prefrontal cortex is heavily involved in managing emotions, eating behavior, cravings, addictions, addictive type behavior. And when we repeat that study after several stimulation sessions, we see a significant improvement. She's no longer operating at above one or two standard deviations. She's basically close to normal average in this particular region. And how does this translate into clinical uh, changes? Well, we can see huge changes on her clinical scores. Uh, if we look at the anxiety scores here in the middle, she scored an 18. And by the time she was uh, done with her stimulation sessions, it was less than half. In our world, this is considered a cure going from 18 to 6. PHQ-9, which is a standardized and widely used depression scale, went from 24 to 4, basically a cure, a huge resolution in her depression scale. And we can see those again here on uh, these tabulated uh, forms where the computer tabulates her data. Again, her anxiety was marked as severe, and it translated to uh, a significant improvement by the time she was done with approximately 20 or 30 sessions. And uh, the same is true for PHQ-9, again, a standardized test for depression, went from 24 to 9, and that was a huge improvement. And here again, we're not using a single medication. Uh, in terms of her cognitive scores, we could look at her attention span memory. Uh, she was scoring at almost below average initially, and we see a significant rise over the next several weeks with simply stimulating specific regions of the brain as determined by specific protocols that I use based on the patient's data, clinical history, and brain mapping. And here again, she went from uh, slightly below average on uh, episodic memory. This is a digital standardized test to way above at 111. This is considered a meaningful change by our system, meaning that it's not a just a product of chance. You can see the scores are way above average here. And the same is true with other cognitive domains, such as visual spatial processing and uh, verbal short-term memory. All of the subtests improve. So this is an example of what we can achieve with modern technology. Uh, I'll show you another example. Uh, here is another patient uh, in his 40s who came to us suffering from severe anxiety, sleep disorders, and insomnia. And just to give you a glimpse, his depression scores went from 23 to 8. Uh, anxiety scores were less than half. And this is not even complete uh, simulation sessions. This is less than 30 sessions. PHQ-9, again, a standardized score of depression went from 23 to 11. And what do some of the objective tests show? If we look at the anxiety network, so again, the brain operates with a series of networks, meaning that there are several nodes and parts in the brain that work in concert for a particular task. And it's uh, divided into different networks using functional MRI data. Here we have a quantitative EEG mapping where we see 2.65 standard deviations away from normal in areas such as the precuneus, the center structure here. And also in the parahippocampal gyrus and temporal lobe, which are involved in anxiety and emotions. And we see a significant improvement. You can see that because the color is less robust, less intense, meaning that there is less 
standard deviation from normal. And you can see a big change here, again, specifically in the precuneus. No two patients are alike, and some patients' anxiety networks involve other nodes that light up as abnormal. So we use every individual's brain map to make decisions regarding which target to stimulate. And here we have, again see a significant improvement. I welcome you to learn more on our website at www.neurospabrain.com. This was a short sample of some recent patients that I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for your attention.